Chapter 462 and 463 Looking at his fingertips that healed instantaneously, and then thinking back at how easily he managed to use the Shikatsumiyaku Jutsu just a few moments ago, Kuroto can't help but mutter in wonder, is this how a genius feels? The ten-finger drilling bullets that Kuroto used a few moments ago was used with incredible ease, there was no resistance, no need for guidance, nothing at all, no it felt natural, as if he should be able to use it without a doubt, sort of like an instinct to the body. And this feeling made Kuroto sort of overwhelmed, after all, he has always had a mediocre talent and has always required a lot of practice and hard work to gain proficiency in any ninjutsu. Condensing his divergent thoughts, Kuroto slowly walked towards the center of the training site and clapped his hands. As soon as, Kuroto clapped his hands, several humanoid puppets appeared out of the storage rooms. These puppets were sent by the go-dame Kazakage Pakura as per Kuroto's instructions, and Kuroto then gave these puppets autonomy using the demon Morio's chakra, to make these puppets serve as the objects of training. The strength of each of these puppets varies, with some being Genin level, a few at the Chunin level, and even Jonin level based on how much chakra they contain. The purpose of varying degrees of strength is to make them simulate a real war situation where the strength of the enemy is not always the same, as each enemy has a different strength. Unfortunately, these puppets are only capable of using Taijutsu and Shinobi tools like Shuriken, Sinbon, and Kunai, etc. because Kuroto has no method to enable these puppets from being able to use Ninjutsu, Genjutsu, other forms of Jutsu or different Kekiai Genkai, else he would have surely done that for better war simulation. Clack clack. After these puppets took their respective positions and surrounded Kuroto from all sides, the lights in the room dimmed. Normally, Kuroto has no problem seeing in the dark because of the Byakugan, but since he is testing a few things so Kuroto did not activate the Byakugan, in fact, he even closed his eyelids, then bent forward changing the center of gravity of his body. Let's start! And the very next instant, these puppets started to attack Kuroto in a perfectly coordinated manner. All sorts of kunai, shuriken, and senbon, rushed towards Kuroto from all directions. The attacks weren't solely focused on him but arranged in such a manner that his retreat options were also very limited. And since, Kuroto's eyes were closed, so he did not know of which directions to take. Well technically, he shouldn't have known of which directions to take, but for some reason he did. Feeling the minimal changes in the airflow around him, and listening to the sound of each shuriken, kunai, and senbon cutting through the air, Kuroto murmured slightly as his lips arched in a smirk, I feel it! Just before the tools hit him and cause an injury, Kuroto's figure turned into an afterimage. And this afterimage was like an inexplicable ghost, moving all over the room, calmly evading each and every attack by the use of minimal movements necessary. This is the feeling, muttered Kuroto, as he easily dodged another rain of shuriken and a blade attack. What Kuroto is currently practicing is another jutsu of the Kagaya clan, the Dance of Willow, that was recorded in the scroll. The Dance of Willow is not as simplistic as it appears, in fact, not even a single dance of the Kagaya clan is as simplistic as they appear to be. The dances of the Kagaya clan highly revolves around sensing the minimal changes in the surrounding airflow, then responding accordingly. Those of the Kagaya clan rely less on vision and more on the changes in airflow, and thus their moves appear to be bodily instincts. Clang clang ding ding. A series of metal crashing sounds rang through the room and the kunai and shuriken cut by the bone blades fell to the ground. Kuroto finally stopped at this moment and the several bone blades that were protruding out of his palm, elbows, shoulders, and knees retracted back inside the body. At the same time, the skin that had ripped wide open was healed again. Next is Dance of Camellia. Muttered Kuroto as he pulled out a single modified sword made out of his upper arm bone, and using this sword made out of bone, Kuroto started to repeatedly stab the various puppets at such rapid speed that it literally created several afterimages. Each stab was directed at a different part of the puppet, and at a different angle with slightly different regularity, so Kuroto's movements became increasingly difficult to predict. By the time, Kuroto stopped, all the puppets in the room along with the swords in their arms were cut into pieces by the bone blade and collapsed on the ground. Seeing this scene, Kuroto squatted on the ground and looked at the fragments of the puppets and the swords scattered on the ground, and he wasn't much surprised to find that each cut was extremely neat and smooth, clearly indicating the sharpness that the bone blade carried. After pondering a little, Kuroto again shook his right hand, and a bone blade stretched out from the palm of his right hand, then, Kuroto picked up a kunai lying on the floor. Ding. The bone blade and kunai were struck against each other and accompanied by a sharp sound, the metallic kunai was immediately cut into two fragments by the bone spur. The sharpness of the bone is extraordinary muttered Kuroto as he looked at the bone blade in his hand. The kunai was cut into two pieces when Kuroto did not even put too much force in it. This alone shows how sharp a simple bone blade it. Normally, Kuroto should be happy about it, but he was not, and a trace of worry grew in his heart. The more talented the members of the Kagaya clan, the earlier they die. Kuroto certainly has very high expectations from this wind nature clone, the high volume of chakra, Byakugan purity, and body-soul synchronization alone is more than enough to make the potential of this clone very high. This is why Kuroto didn't need this clone to have very strong potential towards Shikatsumiyaku, because the stronger the potential of Shikatsumiyaku, the severe disease to the body, and the earlier this clone would be destroyed. After thinking for a while, Kuroto decided to use Shikatsumiyaku less in the future, and immediately after that, he pondered on which Kekiai Genkai to master for this clone. 
There is more than one option at Kuroto's hand, as Kuroto has information of quite a lot of Kekiai Genkai with wind as one of the chakra nature of that Kekiai Genkai. Ice release, scorch release, magnet release. But neither of these three is a Kekiai Genkai purely based on wind release. Ice release can be discarded because it contains too much water nature chakra, so the two options in front of Kuroto are magnet release and scorch release. Which one should I choose? Magnet release? Or scorch release? muttered Kuroto with a thoughtful look. The first choice is magnet release. Magnet Release is a Kekiai Genkai assumed to be the combination of Wind Release and Earth Release. Magnet Release has also become symbolic to Sunagakure. It was created by Sandame Kazakage upon studying the abilities of Shikaku, and it won't be far-fetched to say that mastering Magnet Release is equivalent to becoming a candidate for the position of Kazakage. It's a very useful and versatile Kekiai Genkai. Then the second option Kuroto has is Scorch Release. According to the information given to him by Pakura, the Kekiai Genkai Scorch Release is a combination of Fire Release and Wind Release. Scorch Release is a very special and unique Kekiai Genkai as Pakura is the only known person to have mastery over this Kekiai Genkai. Of course, there is also a third Kekiai Genkai that Kuroto has deeply considered, that being Typhoon Release. Typhoon Release is also a nature transformation Kekiai Genkai, and Typhoon Release is also a unique Kekiai Genkai. But Typhoon Release in essence is just an enhanced version of Wind Release that uses the phenomenon of change in air pressure to cause the wind to rotate at high speed forming a cyclone. And given the fact that the wind chakra nature of this clone A is too high, so Kuroto doesn't even feel the need to master this Kekiai Genkai, it can even be said that this clone was already born with Typhoon Release. So after a whole lot of consideration, Kuroto decided to learn both Magnet Release and Scorch Release, the reason being that neither of the two has wind as their primary chakra nature. So, mastering both the Kekiai Genkai, along with the Typhoon Release will make this clone's mastery over the Wind Release extreme, which is what's Kuroto's primary objective. Now Kuroto isn't really worried about the need to have to master the Earth Chakra nature and Fire Chakra nature for learning both the Kekiai Genkai, the reason for this although unwanted, is quite unchangeable, in fact. Despite Kuroto washing his own and Kimamaro cells repeatedly to clear away the other chakra natures, except for Wind Chakra nature, when Kuroto passed the chakra of this clone through char induction paper, the paper split into four unequal parts. The largest part turned into dirt and crumbled, the second largest part was ignited and turned into ash, then the third part wrinkled and finally the smallest part became wet which indicated that this clone A has an affinity towards all five basic chakra natures because of the split, crumble, burn, wrinkle, and wetting. And if Kuroto includes this clone's incredible ability to manipulate osteoblasts and osteoclasts, at the same time also being able to use Byakugan which is a very high purity, it would further imply that this clone also uses Yang release and Yin release to a very high degree. When all of these facts are put together, the result is already making Kuroto cry tears of blood. He did not want this clone to have an affinity towards all the five chakra natures, the affinity towards lightning and water is totally unnecessary. But alas, Kuroto is helpless, he has no option but to make do with all the five affinities. Who would have thought, of all things, one day I would regret having an affinity towards all five basic chakra natures. This clone A is too exaggerated. And if not for the fact that my main body can also use Tensegan chakra mode, otherwise, the strength of this clone is definitely higher than even my main body. Which is completely unbelievable. Sighed Kuroto helplessly then focused his attention on the matter at hand. The first thing that Kuroto has to focus on now is learning magnet release. Aside from having the scroll of magnet release sent by Pakura, Kuroto also has Sandame Kazakage puppet at his disposal. Since the Sandame Kazakage puppet can use magnet release, so Kuroto has obviously experienced how to use this Kekiai Genkai several times. So, it wouldn't be wrong to say that of the people currently alive, Kuroto's understanding of magnet release is second only to Sandame Kazakage, the creator of magnet release. Magnet release as its name suggests involves controlling the magnetic force. Normally, magnetism is involved, or should have been involved with lightning release to generate magnetic force and magnetic field by the use of electricity, then use that magnetic field to control metallic dust. But that's not magnetism, that's electromagnetism. Magnet release actually involves earth release and wind release. Each element, elements of the periodic table not nature affinities, has its set of positive and negative ions in its nucleus and electron shells. The result of the number of positive and negative ions determines the resultant charge of that atom. The resultant charge could either be zero, positive or negative depending on the overall sum of the charge. Each of these stable atoms when viewed in a mass quantity have an overall zero polarity because the positives cancel out the negatives, resulting in a stable zero charge substance. Overall zero charge is necessary, else the element would be highly reactive, and wouldn't be able to exist as an individual element in nature, rather it would exist either as a molecule, or in some kind of bond be that chemical, physical, or metallic with itself or some other element so as to maintain an overall zero charge for stability. However, when particles vibrate or are rubbed against each other by any means, they gain some form of polarity which results in a static current, just as pieces of paper are attracted to a plastic cone that is rubbed on hair. This combination of static current produced from countless particles produces a large amount of current, which induces an overall magnetic field. This induced magnetic field can be used to control metallic substances, such as iron dust, gold dust, and sand dust mixed with many different types of magnetic elements, or metallic substances like shuriken etc. 
So, in a broad sense, it wouldn't be wrong to say that magnetic force is generated using earth release chakra, and it is the basic mechanism of magnet release. But it's not so simple, as there is also a natural magnetic field of the planet, which would most of the time cause deviations in the resultant vector. Then there is also a gravitational field that would act on the substance, again changing the direction and magnitude of the resultant vector. Additionally, there is also air resistance, which would further influence the resultant vector and decrease the power output des. All these natural forces naturally affect the resultant vectors and decrease the power output. So, to overcome this problem of various deviations, wind release is used in conjunction with the earth release. Instead of using the magnetic field to guide the metallic substances, wind release is used to guide the magnetic substances. While the magnetic field is only used to shape the magnetic substances. By doing this, the magnetic field is only limited to the substance, as a result, it is not easily influenced by the magnetic field of the planet. And wind release also decreases the air resistance, as wind easily cut through the air, further decreasing the amount of chakra needed for many things. And that's how magnet release functions, well theoretically at least. After understanding the principles and mechanism of the magnet release, Kuroto summons Sandame Kazakage puppet to the training site. For Kuroto who has already mastered ice release, blaze release, Ashihomi, and Hozuki clan's hydrification Kekiai Genkai, learning magnet release is not that difficult. So, Kuroto borrowed some iron sand, gold sand, other types of metallic sand, and normal sand from the Sandame Kazakage and quickly began practicing magnet release. There is a reason for taking different types of sands. Each person has a different type of chakra and their chakra matches with a different type of magnetic substance. For example, Sandame Kazakage's chakra matches up with iron sand, which is a paramagnetic substance, while Yandame Kazakage's chakra matches up with gold sand which is actually a diamagnetic substance. Gara's chakra matches up with both paramagnetic and diamagnetic substances, but that's just an individual case. Kuroto doesn't know what type of substance his chakra matches up with, as there is no method to determine it without actually controlling the substance with magnet release. Therefore, he has both paramagnetic and diamagnetic substances in the training site. 